Hi everybody, it's Kay Kaltoff. Welcome to a Stamping to Share video. This is a Facebook Live, and I will be rebroadcasting this very live tomorrow on YouTube at 10 a.m. So if you're joining us a little bit later and you'd like to chit chat with me and see the whole thing in kind of a live format, you can do that over at YouTube as a premiere. All right, so let's jump into this Facebook Live. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. It's just super fun to be here because I have such pretty cards to share with you today. We are going to make two autumn cards, and these are cards that my downline got to enjoy at our Stamping to Share demo meeting last week. And so I did a swap card with my downline, which is this one. This was what I mailed out to all the downline participating in my swap last month. And then this card was my top 10 card for all of the people in my group who were in my top 10 for sales. And so we're going to go get we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to do the top 10 card first, so I'm going to take this out of the way. And I want to let you know that the bundle we're using today is called Autumn Leaves. This has been a popular bundle, an even more popular suite, and the cards or the all about autumn paper is not available right now. And I think there's something else in that suite that's not available as well. But you know, it just goes to show how popular it is. So this is what the bundle looks like, and I believe the bundle is available right now, but I don't think the paper is available until. October 9th, if I recall correctly. And just to let you know, I did discontinue my paper shares today because I believe there are six papers that are brand new in the mini catalog that are unavailable. So it's kind of pointless for me to try to make paper shares when there's not paper to make my shares. So I did cancel that this morning. Oh, Mary Ellen is telling me the ribbon is not in stock. Yeah, I knew there was something about that suite. We are not using that ribbon today. I am using some very pretty ribbon, but this is our copper clay and our pebbled path textured ribbon. And then, of course, we have our neutrals uh, sequins. And thank you. So many of you have ordered neutral sequins. And yay, they are not out of stock on neutral sequins. They're just beautiful. Um and what else do we've got in here? We're going to be using some blends today. So let me go ahead and show you how this card is put together. So the first thing I'm going to do is share that I did not use just the leaves paper because we had enough people swapping that I had to, or enough top 10 cards that I had to change it up a little bit. And so some of my top teners got this paper as well. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with this paper, and then I'll show you all of the designs that I did with this at the very end. Um, let's go ahead and figure this out here. So we are going to do portrait style, which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and this is pumpkin pie. It's not that often that I use pumpkin pie, and I'll share with you why I did. It's kind of funny. When I first saw this stamp set, I, I hadn't really looked at it that closely in the catalog. I just knew I wanted it. And so when I got it, this writing is kind of small. It's actually smaller on the stamp set than it is when you stamp it out on real life. And when I first got this stamp set, I thought this said, Autumn teaches us that orange can be beautiful. And I thought, wow, that's that's different stamping up. <laughs> and then and I thought, well, I can work with it. And it was so funny because then I got it and stamped it. That is not what it says. It does not say autumn teaches us that orange can be beautiful. It actually says autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful, which makes a little more sense. But you know, sometimes I have those goof ups. All right, so I mentioned that we're going to do a portrait style. We're going to go ahead and do the inside panel first because there's hardly anything to it. We have a three and three-fourths by five-inch panel of the very vanilla paper. And I am going to use my stamp and seal, and we're going to put this down. 
on the inside panel and I'm actually using stamp and seal at the top and the bottom. And those of you that know me, I typically don't do that. I typically let my my inside panels be a little bit loose and flowing because I think that gives it a more elegant look. But in this situation, we're also taking a half inch strip of the designer series paper and we're going to float that down on the left side um, you know, attaching it at the top here and the bottom here. So I didn't want it floating. So let me go ahead and do that. For this, I'm gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue. And I'm actually going to just put it right down here on my paper. And then I like to go in, and I think, because this is the path down here, I think I want mostly leaves showing and a little less of the path. So we're just gonna bring this in Line it up so that, you know, it has a nice even border on the very vanilla all the way down to that side. And then flip it over, take your paper snips, and just trim off that little bit of overlay. All right. Okay, so the inside panel is done. Nothing to it. The outside panel, we've got a couple of pieces here of the Designer Series paper. And one thing that we'll be using is Pebbled Path. This is one of our in colors that debuted this past summer. I've got this cut at two and five eighths by five and one eighth. And then my beautiful leaves are two and a half by five inches. And I will go ahead and put this on with some multi-purpose liquid glue. And let me go ahead and set this right onto our pebbled path matte backing and the nice thing about glue is I can just wiggle that into place so that I can get all four borders nice and even. I think I'm going to just use my bone folder here and get that a little more stabilized. Then I'm going to take multi-purpose liquid glue again and we are going to set this in on the left hand side of the card so that the top, the left, and the bottom all have about the same amount of spacing. And I think that looks pretty good. I'll hold it up so you can see what I did here. Beautiful. All right, the next thing that we're going to do, let me bring out what we're doing next. Um, on the next... <laughs> I'm gonna jump ahead. So the next card that we're going to do that I'm going to do with you, let me grab it here real quick. This one, I mentioned before that I had to use a different uh, designer series paper, and I did. I used this one for that image. But what happened is when I did that, because I wanted it to go landscape style, I had a lot of extra at the bottom that I wasn't really using and it. And it wasn't so great to look at because this is what it looked like. You know, it wasn't that great from this side. So what I did is I took that paper, see? And this is the back, this is the side I actually ended up using. I took that and I cut out all these leaves from the side that, you know, so one, Part of the paper I used and part of the paper I used the other side for a different card. And then what's uh, super nice about all of these dies is you do get a couple of duplicates to help your process go a little faster. So I used the two maple leaves and I, I cut them out. I cut out a whole bunch of maple leaves to make these cards. And so what I ended up with were these two little leaves that look like this. But I want them to coordinate a little more with the background. So I took some scrap paper, I put my, my leaves down, and then using the two inks that are coordinating with this paper that I've picked, I've got pumpkin pie, and I've got Pebbled Path, and I'm going to use my blending brushes from Stampin' Up, and I've obviously I've been using this one for the pumpkin pie, 
And then this mini blending brush I've been using for the pebbled path. So I'm going to take the mini blending brush, grab a little ink from the pebbled path, and I'm just, uh, I start off the edge of the scrap paper and just bring that in. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one over here. And I don't mind if a little bit of the ivory shows through. I think that's quite pretty. And then we're gonna do um, a little bit of the pumpkin pie on this side. And then we end up with something that looks just stunning. Isn't that gorgeous? So let me go ahead and do this one. And yes, your scrap paper ends up looking stunning as well. I maybe should have just done this on regular like basic white or very vanilla and then taken this these images that are left over from all the shading and made another card out of it. I could have done that if I'd have thought ahead. All right, so we've got that done and you saw now how I did that for all of the leaves. And this varies. I mean, some people got leaves that were pretty filled in like this one and other people got leaves that were a little less filled in, but they all look good. They all look good. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. Oh, actually, I still need the pumpkin pie. I'm gonna bring this back into the picture here because we need to stamp our sentiment. So I took a scrap of very vanilla and using the more squarish die, I die cut a very vanilla panel. And then I can take the, the sentiment that, that says autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful. And orange is beautiful too. And we can go ahead and stamp this right into here and it fits just perfectly. I love it when Stampin' Up! gives us um, some beautiful coordinating dies that work with the sentiments in the stamp sets. All right, so now we are going to, um, now we are going to, oh no, you know what I forgot to do? I will, I just have to get up and grab this ribbon because I think I still have it, I still have it up here. Well, that wasn't too hard. My space is very efficient here at the farm <laughs> because I have literally no room. So it is not a big area where I do my stamping, but I am going to just cut off a little bit of the copper clay and then I'm going to cut off a little bit of the pebbled path. Don't worry, I will um, adjust this as needed. Then I'm going to grab my silicone mat and I'm going to put some adhesive down onto the pebbled path. And I do that with the stamp and seal. So I'm going to use half of the adhesive because I don't want it at the top of that ribbon. So I'm just going to bring it in. And that's why I have the silicone mat down because it does help so that the adhesive isn't, this adhesive is super sticky. So then I just lay the coppered clay over the top of that, lining up the right side, as you can see that I've done here. Wait, I'll bring it up to the camera. And then all I have to do is I'll just trim this left side once I get it down on my card. All right, so here is the card. And let's figure out how we're going to do this. So I know that my, my one leaf is probably going to go about there. So that means I need to bring my ribbon about right here. So just to help me remember where that is, I'm going to make a pencil mark here so that I know where I want my ribbon to be. Then I can remove the leaf. I can trim this up a little bit better because I'm not happy with it. There, I like that better. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add some adhesive to the back. 
I'm going to put it down right where I had my little mark on my scrap paper because that's about where I want it. And then I can press it into place. And then I'm gonna come over here and take off this rough edge. And that's how I did my ribbon. Pretty easy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these leaves and we're gonna set them into place a little bit like this. And then this little square is gonna go in over the top. So I'm going to use some, actually I'm gonna grab my mat. I'm going to use a little uh, stamp and seal on the backs of both of my colored leaves. And then I can go ahead and set those in right now. So that one will go there. And then we're gonna have another one going up here. So we are at this stage of the game. Then take your little squarish sentiment panel and on the other side, you're going to add your dimensionals. And one in each corner is perfect. And then just set it right in, right where you want it. And I think that looks really good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add our, um, we're going to use the take your pick and add in our sequins. So this is what the sequins look like. I feel like I have, I do. This is what a brand new pack of those neutral adhesive back sequins looks like. And like I said, I've had so many of my customers now have ordered this. Um, it's just got the greatest fall fall colors ever. You've got gold, kind of an early espresso type color. You've got copper and silver. Just fantastic. So I've got some here already. And I'm going to be using the espresso color and the copper color get this out of here and I'm going to use my take your pick tool because it is my favorite tool and I'm going to start by taking a small one and setting it in here by this leaf and then I want another small copper colored one and I'm going to set it right here and then another, uh, I think maybe I'll take a large, a large copper colored one to bring out a little more putty. And I'm gonna set that up here in the leaves. And let's see. I think we'll take a large bronze one and put it right here and then a small bronze one and put it up here. And I think we'll take a large copper one and just tuck it in onto the side here. Let's see if I can shove that in a little bit, just like that. So you just barely see it peeking out. And then maybe one more should go in here somewhere. So I'm going to grab another large copper, set that in right there. And let's see how many we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. The eye always likes odd numbers. So let me let me see if I can get this in the camera so you can see where I put them. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love it. All right, let me show you all of the cards I made uh, using this to show you what the different papers look like. So here's two of them. And like I said, people got different ones. 
So here is the other side of this paper. Oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Both of them. You can hardly pick which one you like better. And then, do I have another one here? I do. This is the other papers that I used. Just gorgeously, gorgeously, gorgeous. Thank you everyone for your compliments. You are so nice, I really appreciate it. I also really appreciate that some of you have been sharing. It helps a lot with my channel, so I really appreciate that. All right, I'm going to set all of these aside and let me grab the next card we're making, which is this one. So I need to get a few things out of the way here, including ribbon we will not need ribbon on this card. So this is the card we're going to make next. And I did mention that um, I used a couple of different papers for this. So this treetop paper, when I first got this paper, I looked at it and I was like kind of at a loss. How I was I, how was I going to use this? Turned out to be super easy to use because it works so great with this ginormous maple leaf. And so it just really, I mean, maples are so many gorgeous different colors in the fall. So this was a really nice paper to use. And then this paper, so we're going to be using this to make the card that I'm sharing with you today. And I just love this sun kind of streaming through the woods like this. And I'm using the top half of it. And as I mentioned, the bottom half that I use for my leaves on my top 10 cards. So this was my swap card. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of the way and let's get to putting together this card. So the first thing that we're going to need is a card base and I'm doing landscape style. So I've got a four and a quarter by 11 inch scored at five and a half. And the next thing I'm going to use is a three and three fourths by five inch panel of very vanilla, which is going in on the inside. But before I put that in on the inside, I wanna add my strip. Because these paper panels that I'm using are two and three fourths by six inches, if I cut two of them, I have a half inch left at the bottom since this is a six by six paper pack. So I took the half inch at the bottom and I cut it, well, it wasn't actually in the bottom. I just basically cut that piece of paper in half, three by six inches, and then I took a quarter inch off. So this is a quarter inch off of the strip that I'm using. So it's a one fourth inch strip. And I'm going to put some adhesive on this. So let me do that. I'm just gonna use some multi-purpose liquid glue. And I am going to set that right here. Let me see if I'm doing it right, yes. Uh, it's gonna go right here. Just for a little accent at the bottom. And then you can, once you have that in there where you want it, you can flip it over and then take off that little, little bit of extra. Then I'm going to take my stamp and seal, add a little stamp and seal at the top, and then this is my inside panel. So the inside panels are really easy. I didn't, I mean, you could add a sentiment for sure if you want to. I just chose not to with this particular card. Let me, um, use my bone folder to get this to lie down for us. All right, now the next panel that we've got here is a two and seven eighths by five and a half inch panel of Pebbled Path. Again, one of the new in colors, and I really love how this looks with the pumpkin pie. It's just super nice, it just, it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to flip this over and we are going to glue this onto our card. And this is just going to go, oh, maybe a little over a half inch from the top edge of the card. So we're going to set this in. 
right about there. To make sure I've got it all lined up just the way I want it. That looks pretty good. Then the next thing I've got is, is the strip that I cut, which is two and three fourths by six inches. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and lay that down and then we will cut off this excess once it's all down. So let me go ahead and add that to this. So this is a 1 8 inch border on each side. So you just wanna maybe use glue so you've got a little bit of wiggle room to get those borders nice and even. Sometimes when you're putting paper down and it's a very narrow border, you have to be really careful if you're using like a uh, stamp and seal or something like that because it's you really can't wiggle it into place. So this is where we're at right now. So I'm going to flip this card open and then I just, I mean, you could use your Stampin' Up! trimmer or or uh, just take a scissors and trim this even. And there we go. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do for this card is we need a scrap of very vanilla. And then from that scrap, you want to cut out another one of those sentiment panels. And this is a little bit different size from the first card. The first card had kind of a squarish sentiment panel for the sentiment we use there. For this card, we want the longer rectangular shaped one. And we're going to stamp, I'm thankful, in where is it in pumpkin pie <clears throat> let's see <coughs> excuse me oh here's some pumpkin pie i'd set it aside i was like where'd it go all right so we're gonna stamp i'm thankful and i'm just pretty much stamping that right in the middle Oh, I just love photopolymer stamps. I don't know about you guys, but I love, 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 love being able to see where I am stamping. Then we're going to take the pebbled path and we're going to take the sentiment that says for all you do. So I'm going to ink that up with the pebbled path and we're gonna stamp that right underneath. I'm thankful. Oh. Perfect. So it looks like this. I'm thankful for all you do. And I am. All right. So that's really all the stamping on that card. Then, well, actually, no, because we have to stamp our leaf. So then using the other side of your scrap or take another scrap, you are going to stamp your leaf image. And I've got my pumpkin pie ink. We'll ink this up. Sometimes on a big image like this, I ink it from the top so I can make sure I'm getting everything nice and even. Then we can flip it over, give it a good press, and this is what it looks like. And it's got a lot of variation. I just love how Stampin' Up! does that with their stamps. So some parts stamp light, some parts stamp dark. That never used to be even an option when I first started stamping. So stamping has come a long way. So then you're going, whoops. Then you're going to take um, your stamp and cut and emboss machine and die cut that, which I've already done. And then you want a scrap of the pebbled path to make the veining in the leaves. And so what I did with this scrap is I also took a one by six inch sheet of our adhesive sheets because you don't want to have to glue that veining. So I just put that on the back side, one at the top, one in the middle, and then one at the bottom. And then I took the die that looks like this this one with all of the veins in it. 
and coming from this side, I pretty much just kept it to the middle of my paper and ran, the, ran it through my die cutting machine. And what happens is you will get a panel like this. Here's what the back looks like. And here's what the front looks like. And I'm going to take these veinings and we're going to be putting that onto our card. Well, onto our leaf. So let me get this all out. All right, so to get the to get this all off, I actually put it I put it so that the front part is down and then I take my my uh stampin adhesive or my silicone mat and then again using my take your pick tool I can just start working these little pieces off to to expose the adhesive. So let me do that. It takes a little bit of patience. This was probably the the most time intensive part of putting this card together for my swap that I did with my downline. So there we go. Maybe my fingernails work better. All right, then we're gonna bring it down another level. This one here is easy because if I can grab one piece, I can pretty much take it all off in one swoop. And then the bottom part I'm going to leave intact for just a second. I wanna go ahead and get this put onto my leaf. So we are gonna set that in so that it fills in the leaf image. And there we go. And then we have our leaf. And it looks so pretty, doesn't it? All right. Then let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put this onto our card. So I am going to expose the adhesive on the stem and then I'm going to use my stamp and seal on my, my leaf cutout. And I'm going to set this about like so. So we can go ahead and get that in. You just wanna make sure that you have a little bit of the leaf sticking out right here. And then make sure you remember to press your stem down so it grabs the card stock. And now everything is intact and there's nothing flipping or flopping. Then take your I'm thankful for all you do sentiment and we're gonna be setting that in right here. But we wanna go ahead and put that on with dimensionals. So I'm going to flip this over. I'll just add a dimensional in every corner and then one, let's see, where's the top? Maybe just one in the middle, top middle. Okay, then we're going to set this in right like that. That looks good. And our card is almost done. We do wanna go ahead and put our embellishments on here. So this is what a new pack looks like of our adhesive backed sparkle gems. Thank you for all the hearts, you guys. You are so sweet. And I'm going to be using the goldish coppery ones. So I don't have a lot left here because again, going through these packs pretty quickly with the swaps. So I am going to add a big one right about here and then a small one I think right up here and then we're going to add one more small one in or you could do a big one whatever you choose. I think maybe right about there. So there is where I put the gems. All right, let's get all of this out. Well, I'll show you these two now because those are done. So those were the two variations I did on my swap card. 
All right. So I really appreciate everyone joining me. Um, before I wrap up, I want to just remind you of what we did last week. So let me grab my, my cards from last week. This is using the Scenic Wonders stamp set. Got so much great feedback from all of you for these cards. Really beautiful, really fun, and really easy to make. And so um, I encourage you, if you'd like to see this video, go back in my timeline, either on YouTube or on Facebook, and you'll be able to re-watch this to see these cards. Then, of course, um, we had all the cards we made this week, so I'm just going to quickly uh, set those out. Just get them all out here so you can see them. I think this looks pretty good. So these were all the different variations and things that I did with my top 10 cards for my downline group and my swap cards. And then next week, I'm not going to be here. So there will not be a Facebook Live next week. Taking some time off from Stampin' Up! And i uh, got lots of family things going on and, and some bigger projects that we're working on. So I won't be stamping for the next week or so. So I won't be here. But in two weeks... We are going to make this these two cards using the earthen textures. And so I will share with you, these were uh, this was a top 10 card that I did for my downline group. And this was the swap card that I did for my downline group. And I can't remember, I think that was a couple of months ago already. And so um, I'll share with you how to create these absolutely gorgeous cards. And that will be in two weeks. So... That will be the first week of October, I believe. No, second week of October? Because I think, is October like starting next week already? I'm so confused. I don't know. I just know two weeks from today. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. I truly appreciate you. Uh, thanks so much for joining me in my video. I'm trying to find the cards here so I can leave you with what I've done today. And you guys all have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.